Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about generators and we're specifically going to be talking about the most simple implementation of generators. We're not going to go into generator expressions or coroutines. Um, those will be for a more advanced video in the future. And we're also going to show how you type annotate a generator. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so what we're going to do for an example today is we're going to make a uh, implementation of the range function, uh, well, a very, very simplified version of one, uh, using a generator. So let's start by opening up a little Python file. So the thing that makes a function a generator as opposed to a normal function is it has the yield keyword similar in it. So you know, if we have a function of uh, my range and um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that just popped in my head is the my brand uh, meme, but anyway, <laughs> my range. Uh, so the thing that makes a generator a generator is the yield statement, and, or the yield expression, or yield keyword. I said it right the first time. Um, and so if you do, for instance, like yield one, yield two, yield three, uh, this is now a generator. And what a generator does is it allows you to loop over it and... Um, you know, the, the way that I think about it is the execution bounces back and forth between inside this function and the looping code. So if we we save this and do Python 3 import t, uh, if we run uh, for thing in t.myrange, uh, we're not actually using the value here, but we'll pass in 10 for now. Uh, print thing. And so what happened here is we ran this for loop, it initialized this generator, which just calls this function but doesn't do anything yet. Uh, and then the for loop will incrementally go here and then 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 here. And so it kind of it kind of bounces back and forth. Um, and this kind of pumps values into the for loop. We can also kind of visualize this by doing how or like running a for loop how it would actually run behind the scenes because for loops are actually just special syntax sugar for what I'm about to show you. Um, so if we assign this generator, if we look at it, it's just this generator object from this function. And if we call next on this generator, this is essentially what a for loop will do. You'll see that we'll get out the incremental values. So you'll see we'll get that, that one yielded here, then we'll get the two yielded here, uh, then we'll get the three yielded here. And when you reach the end of a generator, and you try and call next on it, it will raise stop iteration. So you, if you see this here, you'll see we get a stop iteration exception. And this is essentially how a, a for loop runs. You can kind of emulate a for loop using a while loop by doing, you know, gen equals t dot my range 10, um, while true. And this is a little bit more advanced, so don't worry if you don't understand what's going on here. Um, value equals next gen except stop iteration break else you know let's say we're running the actual for loop that we put up here we would do print value and so this is like saying for value in t dot my range print value but you know, as a as a while loop instead so this is kind of the syntax sugar that happens behind the scenes of a for loop. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're a little bit off topic here. Let's implement my range. Um, and of course we could cheat here and we could just do return range X, but I find that that's not super interesting. And also this isn't a generator. This is just re-returning this iterator object here. Um, you can actually use yield from, uh, this would this would also implement the generator here, but I think this is also cheating. So what yield from does is it takes any iterable here and it incrementally yields from it. So it's it's um, this syntax here is essentially the same as doing from z in range x yields z. Now um, this is this is new syntax in Python three, so you for some reason you're stuck in Python two, you won't have this feature. Um, but we're gonna do it without yield from and without calling range because I feel like that's cheating. Uh, and we're gonna implement the same functionality as just one argument range. So if we call our range with 10, we should get you know zero to nine. So um, value equals zero. So we're gonna do a while loop instead of this. So while value is less than X, we're going to yield the value. 
So this will first yield zero, and then we want to increment it. So we'll do value plus equals one, and um, this will this will implement kind of the the basic range there. So if we close this and reopen this, import t for uh, x in t dot my range ten print got x this, um, and you'll see that we're we're able to implement the simplest function of range in a loop there. Um, but yeah, so I guess that kind of goes over the, the basics of range. Uh, you'll often use them if you want to make like a, um, you know, an unknown iterator size or you can't reuse a, another data type such as like list or tuple, um, or you need to make something that, you know, generates values. I guess that's why it's called a generator. <laughs> Okay, cool. So the last part of this puzzle is how do you type annotate a generator? And there are actually more advanced typings of generators, but we're first going to implement or import this uh, generator type from the typing module. And in this case, we took an integer and we're going to return a generator. Now, generator is actually generic, so you'll want to specify the type parameters. And there are three type parameters in generators. We're only going to deal with one of them today. Uh, because we're only dealing with the yield type, but there's also the send type and return type. But those are those are a little bit more complicated and only really get involved if you're dealing with generator coroutines, which we're not doing today. Um, but for your, your typical typing cases, uh, the first type is the yield type, because that's the most important type. Uh, for the send type and the return type, we're going to use none here. And I've found that like 99.9% .9 of the generators that I write have this sort of pattern here where it's generator, some type, and then none, none. And uh, actually you can also type annotate these as an iterator instead of a generator because a generator is an iterator. And it makes it a little bit simpler in this typing here. You don't need this extra none, none. Um, however, I like to use generator explicitly because you know it is actually a generator. Now, you might want to use iterator if maybe you would swap out the implementation at another date for a different type that's not specifically a generator, uh, and then you wouldn't have to change the annotation, but, you know, you can go back and forth on this. Either either one of these will work. Uh, you can even use iterable if, if you want it even less specific. Um, but yeah, that's how you uh, type annotate a generator. Uh, we'll go over these two other parameters in another video. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I have to learn more about generator coroutines because I, I think I've used them a total of one time. Uh, but anyway, this is generators, simple generators, and how you would type annotate them. Uh, hopefully this was useful. If you guys have additional questions, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.